Hey everybody, it's Jeff from New York and today we're in Las Vegas. We're going to visit the Neon Museum downtown, which is actually north of the Strip. I never understood why north of the Strip would be considered downtown, but that's what it is here in Las Vegas. This is about, I'm going to say, a mile north of Fremont Street. Um, and you can walk it from Fremont Street, but I suggest you take a Uber or a uh, Lyft or a cab. Uh, the neighborhood could be kind of sketchy, so just keep that in mind. Once you're once you're at the museum, everything's fine. So let's head on in to the Las Vegas Neon Museum, shall we? <laughs> I purchase my tickets online and uh, because it's post-COVID, I suggest you do the same because they only allow a certain amount of people on these tours at a time. So I checked in and they guided me to the gift shop immediately. How convenient. The gift shop has lots of cool stuff, but the only thing I purchased was a bottle of water. I was very thirsty. I did walk from Fremont Street. It's very hot outside. And, uh, of course, as I said in earlier videos, no backpacks right now are allowed on Fremont Street, so I can't bring my water with me. The building that the Neon Museum is housed in was built in 1961 and was actually the lobby of the La Concha Motel and relocated here to become the, uh, the main administrative building of the Neon Museum. Now, just a little info on some uh, ticket information here. The Neon Museum is very strict with regards to photography. They don't allow video cameras, they don't allow uh, tripods, they don't allow just about anything other than your phone. And even if you bring your phone in, you cannot take video, you can only take still pictures. And I know right now some of you are thinking, Hey, Jeff from New York, you're in there with the video cam, what gives? Either you're hiding it, or you, you smeared someone's palm, or you turned on that New York charm. How'd you do that? So, here's the thing. Typically, one day out of the week, usually a Wednesday, they allow professional photographers in, uh, and they can use any camera equipment they want, other than, like, movie-grade cameras. Um... So you can bring in your uh, video cameras, you can bring in your tripods, pretty much for professional photographers. It's once a week. I went on a Wednesday. I believe it usually is a Wednesday around sundown. The ticket is $50, which is quite hefty, um, but I'll spend the money for you guys, of course. Uh, tickets usually are about $20. If you're a Nevada resident, I think it's $10, um, but that's why I'm in here with the video camera. Uh, the tour lasts about two hours. You can walk around as much as you want. And uh, because I paid the $50, I can take video. And uh, I, don't, I usually don't use a tripod or anything. But you can bring in any type of equipment you want on the uh, tour, which is called the Photo Walk Tour, by the way. And again, that's once a week, usually on Wednesdays at sundown. The area we're in right now is called the North Gallery, and it's separate from the regular, uh, the regular museum visits. And it's pretty much featured for uh, wedding receptions, professional photographers. All these signs are original. They are unrestored, so they look uh, broken and, and rusty and things like that. But that's what gives them their charm. This is Mitzi the Rubber Ducky Showgirl who shows up on all my Vegas videos. As most of you know, there are hidden mascots, or some of you call them Easter eggs, in my videos. Mitzi shows up in all the Vegas ones. Sometimes she's easy to spot, other times she's quite elusive, so keep your eyes open while watching the video. If you spot her, note the time in the comments below, and if you're the first one, you'll get a shout-out on an upcoming video. Now, as with most museums, there is someone there that you can ask questions for. You're not actually given a guided tour as you walk through these signs and given the history of each sign. But as you walk through and if you have a question about them, well, there's someone there that will, a uh, very knowledgeable person who can answer any questions you might have about the signs. Another thing to note, and it's, uh, it wasn't made clear during the tour, but it's made clear when you visit the website, is that some of these signs are replicas, not the original signs. I didn't realize that until after my visit when I did some research on the uh, Neon Museum website. But I didn't feel too bad because I paid them with a replica $50 bill. I'm just kidding, people. 
By the way, if I remember during the edit process, I'll leave a link to the uh, Neon Museum website in the description below. This is a great place to bring your kid as he or she is learning the alphabet. A couple other things to note about the museum is uh, when you're visiting, the entire museum is on gravel. So ladies, keep that in mind when you're picking out your shoes when you visit. And also, you'll see that rock border that's around the signs. You're not allowed to go past that rock border or reach past that rock border as well. Hmm, Jerry's Nugget. I didn't even want to ask. Another thing to keep in mind is if you purchase your tickets ahead of time online, and again, I suggest you do that post-COVID because these tours are quite small and they book up quite quickly. Uh, regardless of rain or shine, you will not be given a refund if it rains here. Um, now, how often does it rain in Las Vegas? Very rarely, but that's something to keep in mind, or at least check the forecast when you're buying your ticket. For that uh, rare instance where there might be a rainy day in Las Vegas, uh, you just want to check that out before you buy your ticket because they are not refundable. So I always felt that there were two places in the U.S. and in the world, for that matter, that uh, are known for signs. Um, obviously, Las Vegas is one, and the other one, of course, is Times Square back in New York. Um, but it's amazing the, the evolution of these signs, how they all started out with light bulbs, then they eventually uh, switched out to neon, and then eventually today we have the LEDs, which are very efficient, much brighter, and you can do so much more with them. This looks like an old Stardust sign, and again, in the North Gallery, which is what this, consi this is considered, um, the signs aren't restored, so we're going to head over to the other area very shortly, and you'll see some signs that are restored. I got so tired of walking around, I sat my S right on the ground. So is this a cat or an E on its side? There's about a dozen entrance signs in the Neon Museum, and if you're an idiot like me, getting in to find out where the tour starts can be quite confusing. Mmm, Mexican. I'm getting hungry. So I was looking at the extrusions coming out of this sign, and I figured, well, that's probably how they climb the sign to change the bulbs. Not a job I'd want. So I wanted to get both sides of this guy. I guess you were wondering about him. He comes from a hotel and casino called Terrible's Hotel and Casino. It was torn down in 2013 to make room for the Silver Sevens Hotel and Casino. Cowboy down. Go into the Vegas Chapel and we're gonna get married. How many of you know that song? Nobody. Fantastic.
The Golden Nugget on Fremont, still around. This sign, well, immortalized here at the Neon Museum. Alrighty, now we're going to head across the street here to see the somewhat restored signs. Just a few questions and answers regarding the Neon Museum. As far as COVID is concerned, yes, they will take your temperature, but then so does everyone else in Las Vegas, so get used to that. It's non-invasive. It's one of those forehead thermometers. Um, they are limiting the number of people per tour so uh, to allow for social distancing. So make sure you make a reservation because you can't just show up and expect to be uh, uh, considered for the next tour. And yes, they do require face masks as you walk around. And as I stressed in other videos, backpacks currently are not allowed in most places in Vegas. So I usually travel with a backpack for snacks and water and, and camera equipment. They are not allowed, so prepare for that before you come out. If the weather turns bad, and it never really does in Vegas, but if it does, if it starts to rain, there's nothing you can do about it. These tours are rain or shine, and they will not give you a refund. They do give private tours. You just have to email them from their website, and they'll give you a, uh, the information on that with regards to rates and times that they will provide a private tour for you. Some of you may be wondering how many of the signs are restored and how many light up. There's currently 19 working signs in the Neon Boneyard. 17 are restored, while two others, the Riviera and the Fitzgeralds, were received in working order. The electrical grid here at the Neon Museum can only support a limited number of signs, so therefore the, the capacity for sign restoration in the Neon Boneyard exhibition is limited, and the bulk of the sign collection is illuminated by ground-level spotlights. As far as photos, yes, you can take photos with your phone or tablet to capture uh, still photos for personal use, not video. Cameras themselves are not allowed. Still photography for any additional artistic or commercial use is prohibited. And uh, if it appears that a photo shoot is being staged, you'll be asked to stop and possibly asked to leave. And uh, again, if you want to do some videos like I'm doing here, you have to pay a little extra. It's called the photo shoot, and it's only one day a week, usually Wednesdays at dusk. So uh, I got away with taking videos because of that, because I paid extra. I paid $50 uh, total to uh, come here. I think the regular ticket's like $20. So keep that in mind if you want to take some videos or if you want to bring a tripod with you or something that's going to cost you a little extra but in general yes you can use your phones to take pictures not video and as far as ada compliant um i can pretty much say that if you're in a wheelchair being pushed by someone or on your own or you have one of those electrical uh, scooters you'll pretty much be okay here if you're using a walker that might be an issue there's a lot of gravel around here and i know how walkers can be in, a, in situations where the, the ground is not smooth. So just keep that in mind that you'll be uh, pretty much have the run of the mill if uh, you're in a wheelchair or a scooter. And if you're in a walker, it's going to be a little bit more limited. And finally, only service animals are allowed. Pets are not allowed in the Neon Museum. It would be a shame if Rover peed on a iconic sign here, especially with five bazillion volts going through it. Speaking of iconic signs, ladies and gentlemen, the iconic Stardust sign. And right behind it, I think we'll get a little closer in a moment, the Riviera sign. Here's a Liberace sign when he used to play at the Hilton. His flashy costumes, some completely covered in glitter and rhinestones, caused him to fit in perfectly among the flashing neon lights and more is more attitude of the ever-growing Sin City. The old lamp from the Aladdin Hotel and Casino.
She looks like a real swinger. She'd fit right in here at Vegas. But not all these signs here at the Neon Museum are hotels and casinos. This sign here is for a standard wholesale supply. This Jerry sign looks like it came from some kind of diner or restaurant. And what is that on top of the sign? A scrambled egg? Not sure what she did last night, but she's got a big old smile on her face. Now if we can only get her to stand up. Here we have some more wedding chapel signs, a laundry sign, and those pink signs in the background, they look very flamingo-ish to me. Here we have the Las Vegas Club Casino. The Ann Myers Queen of Hearts Hotel and a big N for Nevada. Check out the shape of that sign, the shape of Nevada. With that star right where Vegas is. Speaking of Las Vegas, how many of my New Yorkers out there know what the capital of Nevada is? That's right, Carson City. You guys are so smart, it amazes me. House of Lords Steakhouse. Well, that's kind of repetitive, but that's what it's called. I love a good steakhouse. Unfortunately, this might have been before my time, believe it or not. Uh, how many of you heard of the House of Lords Steakhouse? I never have, but I do enjoy a good steak. And I'm sorry about that, you vegan New Yorkers. And here we have a milkman. When I was young, people used to tell me, you don't look too much like your father. You look more like the milkman. Another big hmm. Here we have a Tropicana Mobile Park sign. Speaking of Tropicana, who remembers the name of Ricky Ricardo's club in I Love Lucy? It was called the Tropicana Room. Now, I don't expect most of you to know that because that was a long time ago, but hey, these are very old signs. Speaking of old signs and old places, here's Chief Hotel Court. There's a vacancy and they've got steam heat. The old Algiers Hotel and Casino. Looks like the Red Barn served up some big old cocktails. And then we have a tiny sign down here for a diner's club. I know they're still around, but does anyone out there, any of you New Yorkers, have a diner's club card? If you do, leave a comment below. Not sure where this relic came from. But I don't think it was called Mott. It probably came from a motel. And a big one at that. Back in the old day, if you and the family was checking into a motel with color television, you were the shizzle. Today, if you're checking into a motel, well, you really don't care too much about the television. So I know it's the name of a cactus, but how would you like to spend your vacation in Vegas? Go back to the office and explain to people why you stayed at the Yucca. The Clark Inn, that's so Vegas vacation. Samarin Motel. Again, I never heard of a lot of these places, but hey, you never know. Maybe your grandfather or great-grandfather stayed at one of these motels. And I'm hoping with your grandmother or great-grandmother. Binion's, a recognizable name here and still in business down on Fremont Street. Sassy Sally's was a casino that was on Fremont Street in the 1990s. And a special shout out to Sheila Shindy who found Missy the Rubber Ducky Showgirl in my last uh, video which was the Bellagio post-Covid video. 
She also found Mitzi in the Las Vegas Strip post-COVID, so she's doing a great job finding Mitzi, the rubber ducky showgirl. And a shout out to Wise Malik, the one who usually spots Mitzi, the rubber ducky showgirl. He spotted her in the Flamingo Habitat and Pool video. So, Wise Malik, it looks like you have some competition there with Sheila Shindy. Here's the Fitzgerald sign, one of more than a dozen working signs here at the Neon Museum. The Fitzgerald was a hotel and casino that was taken down in 2012, and it eventually became the D. So a lot of you are familiar with the D on uh, Fremont Street. And here we have the Binion Horseshoe, which is an oldie but goodie hotel and casino. And coming up shortly, uh, we're going to announce the winner of the latest $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. It's uh, for anyone who subscribed during the contest or even prior to the contest. You're all eligible to win, so stay tuned and find out who the lucky person is. And hey, if you didn't win this time, well, stay subscribed. Don't unsubscribe, because if you unsubscribe, you won't be eligible for the next contest. So stay subscribed. You're automatically enrolled in the next one if you didn't win this one. So good luck to everyone tonight. Here we have an old showboat sign. There are no showboats anymore in Las Vegas, but there is one in Atlantic City. So make sure you check that video out. It's no longer a hotel casino. It's just a hotel. And behind it is an old El Cortez sign. El Cortez, I also have a video on this uh, channel here, so check it out. Uh, El Cortez has kind of like a cult following. There's people who either love it or hate it, and the ones that love it go back every time they visit Las Vegas. Here we have a very colorful Lido sign, yellow, red, blue, and green. Which one's not a primary color? Leave a comment below. I think the Lido was actually a showroom in the old Stardust Hotel and Casino, um, it featured a show that had lots and lots of showgirls and, you know, your typical old school Vegas show. It was very popular in its day. Here's the original sign to Moulin Rouge, another iconic building here in Las Vegas. Looks like some more stardust floating around the Neon Museum tonight. Here's what might be the newest addition to the Neon Museum, the guitar from Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here on the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, they closed down just recently, and it's being converted into a Virgin Hotel and Casino. Uh, there is a Hard Rock in Atlantic City. It's a really nice hotel and casino with tons of memorabilia. I have a video on the Hard Rock uh, in Atlantic City, so check that out, as well as a separate video on all the memorabilia, tons of it, in the uh, Atlantic City Hard Rock, so check both those videos out. I'm thinking this one's from the old Aladdin, just by the shape of it, but it says Lost Vegas. I'm sorry guys, I should have asked, I didn't. If you know, leave a comment below. Another shot of the Hard Rock guitar. I like how the strings vibrate, you'll see that in a second. I play guitar, a lot of you guys don't know that. I play it really, really badly. And uh, I also play drums, which I play a little bit better than guitar, but that doesn't say much for my drumming either. Hey, Jeff from New York. This isn't the Neon Museum. We're back on Fremont Street at the Golden Gate. That's right, my New Yorkers. I uh, walked to the Neon Museum, didn't feel safe. I Ubered back to Fremont Street. All it takes is a simple app, and I saved my life. Coming up next on the New York Channel, we're going to visit Caesars Palace post-COVID. Hey Dave, make yourself comfortable, why don't you? And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> the drawing of a winner of the New York Channel's most current $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed during the contest and anyone who subscribed prior to the contest. You're all eligible to win this contest. And again, if you don't win today... Please don't unsubscribe because you're automatically entered into the next $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. Once you unsubscribe, you're no longer qualified for the next gift card. So stay subscribed. Even if you didn't win tonight, there's always a next chance. As many of you know, I do this several times a year. And the more subscribers I have, the more often I can do it. And I know many of the subscribers go back to the original contest videos to see who won, and I made it pretty clear that it's going to be announced in one of my videos this week. This is the one. I do take those contest videos down immediately after a winner is drawn because I don't want people to uh, enter a contest that's no longer being run. And the winner is Family of AMV. It looks like he or she subscribed back in late March, so it was prior to this contest, and that's perfectly fine. As long as you subscribe to the channel, you can always win one of these gift card giveaways.
I will get in touch with Family of AMV, and if I don't hear from them within a week, I will pick another winner, so stay subscribed and stay tuned. Actually, it's misspelled. It says Family of AMV, but whatever. Congratulations, guys. If you put a buck in my cup, I am going to shut the fuck up, and you ain't gotta be a baller to give me a mother. I kind of felt that was worth 75 cents, but the dude didn't have any change. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, ask some questions, and most importantly, subscribe by clicking on the button on the left. You can visit all of my New York videos by clicking on the top right, or check out my videos on other favorite places to visit by clicking on the bottom right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the city.